Hello everybody and welcome to this A-Level Chemistry question walkthrough video. We'll be looking in this video at the water of crystallization questions which come from the amount of substance topic, so all the chemistry calculations. What I'll be doing in this topic is explaining my thoughts behind the question and I'll be writing those down in blue and then the answers that I give that give you the marks I will be writing in green. What I suggest you do is you pause the video so you can have a go at the question yourself and then press play, listen to what I've got to say and see how you got on with your answer. So before we have a look at the question, just a quick moment to explain what water of crystallization is. Now it's what you find in ionic crystals, so that substance is made of a positive metal ion connected with negative non-metal ions and they're held together by electrostatic attractions. And so this water of crystallization is water that has been trapped within the framework of this ionic lattice. And so during the crystallization process, water molecules are trapped within the crystal structure. Now what we do in a formula is we show the water of crystallization by showing the ionic compounds formula as normal, copper sulfate CuSO4, and then we add a full stop, and then we write down H2O with a number in front of it. Now, what this number is showing is that for every copper sulfate, so one copper and one sulfate, we find incorporated within the lattice five water molecules. So if we had, say, two copper ions and two sulfate ions, there would be ten water molecules trapped within that lattice. So it is, if you like, a mole ratio where there is one copper sulfate mole for five moles of water. And so every time we write the formula of an ionic substance, so here's calcium sulfate dot 4H2O, what we're showing is the mole ratio, one mole of calcium sulfate ions, and there are four moles of water in the ratio for this hydrated salt. So these are hydrated crystals with water trapped in their lattice, and the ratio is shown in the formula. One of the ionic lattice to a certain number of water molecules is usually far more of the water than it is of the ionic compound. And so a classic question about water of crystallization is one based around a practical, and what you're trying to do in this question is work out what the water of crystallization is for a particular hydrated crystal. Now the experiment that you have to do is really straightforward. You put your hydrated crystal inside an evaporating basin that's shown here, you apply heat from underneath, and you see what mass of water has been driven off. In order to do this, you need to know what the mass of the basin is before you start, so the mass of the basin when it is empty, and then you add your solid to it before you've heated it, so this is when the solid is currently hydrated, and then you heat the hydrated crystals for a certain amount of time, and hopefully what you're left with is what's called the anhydrous crystals afterwards. And so what happens in this experiment is water gets driven away from the crystals and you are left with anhydrous crystals in your evaporating basin. And you can see this because the basin obviously has gained mass when you put the sodium carbonate in it and then it loses mass again once that water has been driven off. So what we need to start by doing in this question is by working out the mass of water that has been driven away from the crystals, and we can do that by simply the difference between 25.47 grams, take away 24.92 grams, which will give us a mass of 0 0.55 grams of water. And then what we need to do is work out the mass of sodium carbonate that is left over, and we can do that by looking at the difference in mass between the empty basin and the mass of the basin at the end. So that's 24.92, so that's the basin with the anhydrous crystals, and take away 24.35, which was the mass of the basin by itself. And then that gives us an answer of 0 0.57 grams of sodium carbonate. 
And so now what we have to do is approach this like we would an empirical formula question because ultimately what we want to know is what the sodium carbonate to water ratio is. It might be 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 3, etc. So we want to know the ratio. So how I suggest you set this up is exactly how you would an empirical formula calculation. So you have your mass down the side, or, or you have your labels down the side, and, and the labels begin with mass, then MR, then moles, and then mole ratio. Those are our four kind of headings. And so we've already done part of the work. The mass of sodium carbonate is 0 0.57 grams, and the water is 0 0.55 grams. The MR of sodium carbonate is 106 grams per mole, and water is 18 grams per mole. Moles, as you will know, you calculate it by doing mass divided by MR. So you take your 0 0.57 and divide it by 106, and the value that you get there is 0 0.0054 moles of sodium carbonate. And then the water, you do the same thing, 0 0.55 divided by 18, and that gets you 0 0.0306 moles of water. Now the final thing that you need to do is you need to convert this into a ratio of moles. And when you do this, you always divide it by the smallest. And when you compare these two numbers, obviously the smaller number is this one because it's got two zeros after the decimal point. And so dividing anything by itself gets you one. And then when you divide your moles of water by 0 0.054, you get an answer of 5.682. And so our ratio is one mole of sodium carbonate to 5.682. And what that means then is that our value of X, the water of crystallization, is 5.68. Three significant figures, absolutely fine. And this would get us all five of those marks. Now, in terms of how this mark breaks down, you'd get one mark for the two masses, you'd get another one mark for the moles of sodium carbonate and another mark for the moles of water, and then the fourth mark would be for this ratio, so dividing them both by the smallest, and the fifth mark would be for our final answer for x. And so the question finishes by asking us a couple of qualitative questions. So in other words, we're not needing to use any calculations to support this. And so we are told that the correct answer for the water of crystallization is actually 10. Now, 10 is obviously a lot greater than our value of 5.68. So what that means is there is, in fact, more water inside the crystal structure than we thought there was. And the most likely cause of this is that we didn't heat the crystals for long enough. And as a result, we failed to drive off all of the water. And in fact, you could say either of those two things to get you the one mark, because it is only a one mark question. And so what that means is there was still water left in the crystal structure that we hadn't driven off yet because we didn't heat it for long enough. And so we only got rid of some of the water instead of all of the water. Now, a third option that we could say for this question is that we did not heat the crystals until we had a constant mass. And that's actually the type of procedure that we were doing in this experiment. We were heating to a constant mass. And that's what we want to say in the next question as well, because what they're asking us to do is suggest how the procedure could be improved without changing the apparatus. So it says quite clearly we have to use the same apparatus. Now, it's saying suggest, so that means there are a few different options. So the first option is simply, we could say, heat it for longer. And if we heat it for longer, more of the water will be driven off. We could also say we should use a smaller mass of crystal because that will make it easier to drive off all of the water. And then our third option in terms of a suggestion for an improvement is we could heat the crystals to a constant mass. And then the justification there is we would really, really know that all the water had been driven off because each time you weigh the crystals, the mass will stay the same. 
And so what that means is we can be totally confident that we have got rid of all the water that is trapped within that lattice because each time we heat and reweigh, the mass stops changing. Okay, that's the end of this short video. We'll be back again soon with another question walkthrough. See you again then. Goodbye.